with the Yo-Ho-Ho, it's Ted the Toaster. Welcome to the final episode on my thoughts on Inazuma 11 Ares, the 26 part season, Ares no Tenbin if you want to go by that name. It's been a long journey to get here and I've made it this far thanks to some very helpful people who've helped me with the editing, uh, kept feeding their thoughts through the, the, um, on the series itself and of course everyone who has watched up to this point but it's time to bring it to a close and just say what did we think of the final episode and the season as a whole. This one jumps straight into the action, no take it to the top, um, or at least not in the actual intro sequence anyway. Uh, we just go straight into some chats with Sonny and the Ryman team and Heath and the Luna Prime team. We're going to finish this match, we get the second half entirely within this episode, the first, the episode prior was just the first half so uh, separated quite nicely for once in comparison to uh, a lot of the differences between first and second halves but let's just see what happens, it's 2-2 who's going to win it. And you know what, I'm going to jump ahead because I keep making these statements like who's going to win between Ryman and Luna Prime and uh, I'm sure for most of you, it would be, well, it's obvious, Ryman's going to win, it's in Azuma 11, they never let the protagonists lose, but here's the mindset I was in throughout this episode, right? I I thought that I'd gotten spoiled uh, on Ares all the way back in, like, 2018, while I was still waiting for the game, I was refusing to watch the show because I was waiting for the game to come out, and I just read like an offhand Discord message at one point, right? And I probably just misread it entirely. I don't even know if the season had finished airing when I read this. Maybe it was just a prediction that went wrong, but for one reason or another, I thought up here that all the way through the season, I'd gotten a spoiler telling me that Ryman doesn't win this. And, well, I mean, maybe they don't, but, um, yeah. I really did think that, um, I, I, I did, well I wasn't like certain, it wasn't like a definitive thing, I knew there was a chance that I'd just got it wrong and that Ryman do win, but I, th I had warmed myself up to the possibility of Ryman not winning this, and to be honest, I wanted it. There's, there's so many sports anime, and even not sports uh, anime, that actually conclude with the protagonist not necessarily winning the tournament but they learn something from it and Inazuma's never done this um, the protagonists always prevail in this show and I kind of thought that with this being the second football frontier Ryman are the defending champions technically and we knew we were getting a an Orion season after this to take us in, into something else this was a rare opportunity where actually Ryman didn't have to win this and the season still could have had quite a nice effect, but will they? Think you can get where I'm coming from, but let's just get to the match against Luna Prime. So if the previous match was surprising in that Ryman were kind of dictating the pace for the most part and generally winning just without being in the lead, but they were in the lead at one point, um, this one is now much more evenly matched. We're seeing all kinds of moves for the second time or third time, like Sparky Spin and Darama Boomer. Um, we do see something new from Dusk, our lovely goalkeeper, who opens this episode by saying to Heath, uh, who's apologising to him, he just says, Heath, you're still my hero, in that kind of voice as well. It just, it's still got me here. I just, yeah, too attached to Dusk. Uh, I'm cheering for him with everything I've got. So he makes the stop with a move called Grabber Arm, or Casting Arm in its Japanese name, which is probably a little more descriptive. Um, yeah, he just turns into Miss Incredible from the, or Mrs. Incredible. Just full on Elastigirl's his arm up. Wait, if I get it off screen, I've even got the red shirt on. So, look, I am dust grailing right now. My arm is actually like three meters long and I've, I've brought the ball back with me. It's not what you'd expect. Because um, Luna Prime, they've generally got this theme going on of regal and royal stuff and the moon. Everyone, like the same pattern appears in both Dusk's Lunar Eclipse and in Heath's. Royal Lancer, but then this is just totally. Oh, I'm a Laster Girl now. Here's the ball. Uh, yeah, and off you go, Darama Boomer. Uh, you got through Lunar Eclipse, but not this time. So good. Let's rule out Fire Tornado three and um, see what more they can do to get in the lead, huh? Bit of a step down though, at least from a dub perspective though. Heath, uh, as a midfielder, even though he's a forward, he brings out a midfielding move, and it's 
Skywalker in the dub, or Skywalk in Japanese. And this is actually a more familiar move than I had first noticed. So when I'm first watching this in the dub, I think, wow, that move's just dance on air from Chrono Stones. Uh, he hops into the air, just point, 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 we're walking in the air. And the rest of the Christmas song lyrics. Um, yeah, I was like, it's a bit unoriginal, but it felt just different enough to say maybe it's not the same move. Um, so I did some Googling on the on the wiki and such and realized, so this move's Japanese name is Skywalk. The Japanese name for Dance on Air is Skywalk. Wait a minute, this is the same move. Um, yeah, Ares doesn't tend to pull moves from Go, because obviously Go is canonically 10 years after the fact. Um, they have obviously some parallel versions of stuff from the original trilogy, but this is the first time we'd seen Ares pull from Go. But maybe the dubbing team just weren't quite aware of that one? Um, I just wonder who, um, like where the decisions come in. Have, have the Japanese team said, Oh, it's still called Skywalk, but it's a different move because they did change its element in an Azuma SD. It's gone from Earth to Fire. Or maybe it was just an error entirely on the dub's perspective. They were supposed to call it Dance on Air, but they didn't. Loki Skywalker is a better name than Dance on Air ever was. Nice little cheeky Star Wars reference while retaining the original name. But yeah, something's gone wrong somewhere. This is either meant to be the same move for both. You can't really pretend that they're two different ones, but... Anyway, Heath's got that, I guess, to get past uh, Caesar, who tried his best for the last time this season. It's still more of an appearance than uh, Nino Nango's gonna get. <laughs> still seeing some more repeats. I was saying in the last episode, I'd kind of forgotten that Royal Lancer even exists, but we're seeing it for the third time. It's about to break through Mermaid's Veil, but um, Elliot does a, a bit of a sunny and just runs back to the defense to kick it away. That's good. Keep it up, Elliot. We want to see you involved in this match where you want to overthrow the main villains that have thwarted you all your life and you know you're what kind of one of the most highly rated forwards in the entire season so you you can go for a shot at some point we we believe in you so it's the ball going over to valentine and he busts out a new move as well but kind of an advancement of cold snap um but it really wouldn't feel right for me to say my feelings on on polar pike or curry no yari uh i'm not sure how he would say that properly but um this is a move that has been widely um, explained by a fellow inner tuber, Dragon Blaze. He, it is in a recent-ish video, and probably not recent-ish at the time of releasing this. Um, these take a while to edit. Oh, don't you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's this move where he, Valentine just kind of repeatedly kicks the same frosted ball very slowly until eventually he decides with a back hill. Now you can go and spirals off, and it looks very cool. I never questioned it, but as soon as it was brought into attention, and this really is quite slow to get off the mark, isn't it? Uh, couldn't forget anymore. Uh, definitely recommend that video. I'll try and get that in the description. But um, it doesn't score. It is an actual long shot this time, but uh, Lunar Eclipse is good enough to stop it. Big up the man Dusk. There is room for one more Royal Lancer. Um, but then it's, uh, yeah. Then it sets up into a counter drive for the second time in the season. I'm like, oh no, not again. Surely this time they'll at least stop it, right? Um, and they do, but it takes... They're only able to stop it. Like Dusk again, the best goalkeeper available in the whole season, possibly apart from maybe Mark. Um, he's only able to stop counter drive from Sonny and Basil because two more defenders fell back to back him up and again it just reminds me it's like this is a long shot that starts from Sandra's goal it couldn't be further away and it's literally just take the opponent's shot head on just wheel kick it together and then pelt it across the field it should be like it should be slowing down the ball's path at most let alone reversing it and then making it stronger and firing it at the opponent as one of the strongest uh, shots in the game. Um, yeah, I, it's never sat right with me, but even when it's getting blocked, it still has to remind you, oh, the best goalkeeper in the whole land still needs an extra two defenders just to stop this from ages across the pitch. Um, I'd just permanently put Sonny and Basil in the defence. They don't need to be forwards, just 
have them counter drive in every single match and then Ryman will be invincible. But at least it didn't score, I guess. <laughs> But that's pretty much it for the first half of the whole episode. There's not been a single goal. Again, uh, realistic football. Um, we're not going for a massive over-the-top scoreline here, clearly. Um, not a single person has managed to sink one in. So, um, well, I guess it falls down to one particular person to finish this one off, huh? Yeah, all the camera shots are going on this guy. Let's pay attention to Adriano Donati. He gets a little flashback with his dad, um, and this is where we finally learn the origin of Fire Lemonade, as it were, just the the thing that he yells whenever he goes for a shot, and it's, it's meant to be quite funny in Japanese because it's based on Fire Tornado, and then Fire Lemonado is how they would say this in Japanese. It's similar enough where you can believe someone's saying it as a mistake, and that's actually what happens with Adriano's dad. He doesn't really watch football, but he's encouraging his son to leave the island and uh, make it big with a special move over overseas. Uh, and then he says, oh, you should learn that fire lemonade thingy. Um, that'll do the business. And he's like, oh, cool. What is it? And he's like, oh, we've got to explain this now. Um, so at this point, even though it's been all season long thinking, thought of as just like a fake uh, a mistake fire tornado. I'm sure Adriano can see from Basil that yes, that's probably a different move and even more so in the dub. You couldn't possibly confuse tornado with lemonade. Uh, I mean, if I did get a tornado of lemonade outside my house, then um, uh, the San Pellegrino gods have shined upon me. <laughs> I, th I don't think it would be worth it, but they actually have a nice little dad to son chat about what the fire lemonade could possibly be. It's like, it's got the heat of a lemonade, which doesn't make any sense, but then it's gonna burst, and they're actually talking about it clearly very differently um, to Fire Tornado, and it gets it gives you that little bit of excitement of, um, what if it did finally turn into a move? Surely it's going to, right? We are on the 26th episode now. And well, this is where we get the take it to the top music in the episode, so, uh, yep. He's had some failed fire lemonades throughout the episode already, but he's gaining motivation. Uh, injured Maxime from the bench is watching on saying, he's getting better at it though. And yep, it's time to just lob this at dusk and see what happens. Fire lemonade is finally ready to begin and we've all, we've all been waiting for it. Everyone felt differently. Like, a lot of people found the joke quite grating throughout the season, whereas I just thought it was fine. It's not the funniest thing in the world, but, um, again, as a lemonade enthusiast, I really wanted to see a lemonade-themed Inazuma 11 move. I was very excited by that prospect. And when he just kicks the ball and then the background turns kind of yellow and greenish with some bubbles, it's like... Oh, this is actually more intense than I thought. I was <laughs> eventually thinking, oh, maybe he'll just do a yellow fire tornado, but no, this is going to be something quite different. Um, the, the kind of sad thing is we never get to see it properly in isolation because this is the final episode when we're not actually going to see uh, Fire Lemonade again after this. And even right now, uh, it actually gets intercepted by Heath in the middle of it and then he gets it back and there's all different shots of characters being like, wow, amazing, Adriano's gonna do it. So it's like a full on two minute version of the Fire Lemonade and that's the only version we're ever gonna get. But it really does take, take you by surprise. We knew it was coming, but for the, the change in the background, the unique motions up into the air, and then yeah, it seems kind of basic when he's first launching it at dusk, it's just a bit of a yellow spiral draw, dusk catches it and it seems like he's gonna succeed. But then they call back to the burst, and he's like, Aah! and the ball just detonates <laughs> into an explosion of yellow and green lemoniness. And it's like, oh, I love this. I want to watch a match where fire lemonade happens <laughs> or drinking a lemonade of my own. It's, it's not at all how I expected fire lemonade to look, but it's so much better. I just, I fell for this move, <laughs> so celebratory time, this one's for you Adriano, congrats on your new move, it did score, Ryman have won the tournament now, 
3-2, all thanks to your lemonade. Cheers, bud. Superb. <laughs> so, Ryman have won. Heath admits that he was wrong and all of that. Um, seems like a pretty generic villain turnaround, but he's actually got a little bit more to come, so we'll we'll get to that. Big props to Adriano for winning the game with such a beautiful move. Probably one of my favourite moves of the season, no matter how overdue it was in many minds. Clearly, the spoiler that I read about Ryman not winning the season was wrong. <laughs> um... And I would like to see that world line where actually Ryman just didn't win. I guess the only real way to make that work, like you can't have Luna Prime win uh, because they are too villainous, but maybe if they beat Luna Prime in the semi-finals and then every town won the tournament, that could have worked, potentially. Um, but we got what we got. Sonny's team have won and Elliot did nothing! What the heck, man? If, if there's any one reason why we probably needed this to be a three-parter instead of two, all Elliot did was barge into Heath, give him a brain attack. Um, his single biggest uh, contribution was blocking a shot that was breaking past Sandra to go in the goal. That does count as something that he did, but he didn't even take a shot. Not even a shot that gets blocked, just... He didn't even attempt to score. And it's like, they put, they transferred Elliot from one school to another entirely just to get him into this match. And then he didn't take a shot. He's the demon on the pitch. He's he's doing it for Faith. She's told him to play honestly. And um, he's like, that's not my style. I'm the demon on the pitch. And then the demon in the pitch did diddly squat in this episode. The man did almost nothing. And it's kind of hilarious as an oversight. It's like they just forgot to give him a moment to, to try. Um... But he's won the football frontier, you know. He's worked so hard for it. He's, he's done uh, he, less than Nino Nango did for the Ryman team and less than Cesar did. I guess that goal stop maybe probably exceeds uh, Cesar's one midfielding moment. But that's it. Enjoy your trophy. You can probably go back to Polestar Academy now because um, Aka Reese will be missing you. Yeah, he, he didn't get any more lines in this season. and <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> But the match is over, Ryman have won the tournament, but the episode is not over yet because remember how this season has a villain? Yeah, we've got to deal with him real quick. Um, but instead, I just want to use it as an opportunity to kind of thank the Ares season for not overdoing it with, with the villain. Like, you can't not have a villain in a season, I guess. Like, see, um, Ray Dark was your... Uh, main threat of Inazuma 1. He wasn't that involved with the story. I appreciated that. Then Inazuma 2 is based entirely around its villain scheme. Um, so that's important. Same with Chrono Stones. That story would not work if it was not about its villains. So we give that the pass. Inazuma 3, it only has a, a bit of the story where it's about the villain. And that's probably the low light of the season. You could definitely skip that part in comparison to the rest. Um, but at least it is just boxed into one corner. And you've got Go, which I felt kind of suffered from a little bit too much emphasis on the on the villainous aspect. I would have liked some more uh, teams that you could just play freely against. And uh, Go Galaxy we'll talk about in the future. But Ares, it's got a villain and you are just not obliged to care about him. He appears sometimes. It just about ties the story together, but it doesn't outstay its welcome. And now here, his resolution is just... Oh, Heath was actually uh, keeping his brain tumour untreated the whole time so that he could use it as a way to take down the skills of Ares. That's also why he was talking to Faith. So, big up the, the little rabbit owner. Um, yeah, so he was being a good guy the whole time. He still made some missteps, like he definitely still Omega Maelstromed Polestar Academy unnecessarily. And also did still full on Omega Maelstrom the Ryman team in this match. We don't forget that Heath, but we'll look past it, we'll forgive because he has actually shut this villain down by um, keeping all the data that he'd need and then Elliot busts in. Blasts a football at this uh, dodgy looking snake dude and that's it. He's gone. We don't have to think about him ever again. I appreciate that. This has just been a really light-hearted and fun season and 
It had a villain for the sake of it, but we just didn't need to pay too much attention to that. And that's good. Suppose we should also clear up the whole Elliot uh, brain thing. Um, he has a chat with Regina outside the hospital. Dusk isn't listening. It's a shame he's missed out. Um, it seemed like it was going to be about him for a sec because Regina was all upset talking to Heath. And then he's like, I think you've got the wrong impression. I'm like, oh, is this where we get the revelation? But no, it's it, <laughs> it's about his health. He's getting, a, he's getting an operation soon. Um, so... Yeah, good, good for him. He he will not be perishing at the end of this season. I don't think we expected he would, but uh, I guess that's worthy of mention. And then Elliot also just meets up with Faith, so goes for a walk down uh, the street with Rabbit, uh, but Bunny. Yeah, it's, it's teddy bears. It's, she's not even about rabbits. That's Bunny. Uh, this is just the most convenient teddy bear I have. Um, I have somewhat overwritten the canon of Inazuma here with my own self-projection of Score Bunny, but. At the end of the day, um, Faith is never going to appear in Inazuma 11 again, so I guess that's it just for, <laughs> for Teddy Girl. Um, yeah, Elliot can have this nice fulfilling friendship with his childhood friend entirely off screen because she's never coming back. Thanks for that one, guys. <laughs> So all's forgiven with the three uh, out of Sonny, Elliot and Heath. They're all friends now. They have a nice little farewell scene on the tower. And finally, the season ends with a little mention of what might be happening in the next season. Um, a certain national team has had its members picked. Um, the dub decides to call them the Inazuma 11 rather than the Inazuma National. I do wonder if they would have stuck to that had we got a dub of Inazuma 11 Orion. But we didn't. And that's quite a shame. Um, <laughs> it's out there if you want to watch it. I'm not even sure if I will be covering it in, in this form. This this was a bit of a project and Orion is it would be even more of a project. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, well, let's see if it can uphold the whole... You don't have to care about the villains thing that much. Spoilers. Um, well. <laughs> well. But we are here not to talk about Orion, but to talk about Ares. And it's over now, um, and I really liked it. Uh, I think the whole thing I've been saying about the villain is is one major aspect of why I can get behind it. It's just back to basics fun. Inazuma kind of deserved back to basics because it's not really had that since the first season. The the first, I guess, season three was relatively normal, but like we've come off the back of. Uh, Go One being a supposed return to the football frontier and then it had Fifth Sector and Spirits and then Chrono Stones had time travelling and Mixy Max and then Galaxy was somehow less out there but still extremely out there. Um, Inazuma deserved just a normal season with a new team uh, to just take the football forward. One of my biggest compliments for Ares is how the actual football is better than it's ever been. Like the thing I mentioned before with getting the first goal on Dusk with five different steps just to deceive him and get a regular goal and with Trevor, we've had more regular goals in this season than in any other season of the show. And there's been so many deceptions, so many actual passes based on real world techniques. The football itself has been a treat. And so have all the teams along the way. I've loved the football ambassador scheme. I've loved the choices of who we actually played against um, and following the natural-ish advancement of the Ryman team they had some that were a bit too much like counter drive and polar bear number two and maybe meteor attack um, but then we've had so many highlights so to close off this review of not just the episode the closing episode is just good like straight up it does everything that it sets out to do without uh, feeling like it's dragged out or missing anything. Maybe the previous episode was missing something, but this was just straight up good. But to talk about the season as a whole, let's just list off some favourites and then we'll say goodbye. So favourite characters then. Um, I set out at the start of the season that it was going to be Kiko Calavento. Did he keep that by the end? Kind of, but only because I was forcibly keeping him up there. He didn't necessarily deserve it, but he is still one of my favourites. I would say that Sandra probably took that title in the end, and I actually really grew to appreciate Sonny. Um, and then Adriano finally got his fire lemonade, so uh, although he couldn't be enjoyed to the fullest throughout this season, he certainly can be from this point on. There will be more episodes of Inazuma to come. 
Obviously anyone to do with Alia Academy is a returning character, but the new Xavier as well. Appreciate that. Love the additions to the new Zeus. Um, but I guess my favourite brand new character would of course be Aka Reese from Polestar Academy. He didn't get to do that much um, in the second half of the season, but again, it's like he's not done forever, so I certainly didn't establish him as a favourite character off the back of Ares. It took longer than that, but he is, I can certainly say, definitely uh, my number one. Apart from the real winners, Aurelia and Mr. Yi. Well, alright, I, I guess I like Akaris more than uh, Aurelia, I, I think, but not like yet. Off the back of Ares, my two faves, Aurelia and Mr. Yi. They made this a delight to watch, and I'm so grateful for every moment we got from them. We didn't even get anything from them in this final. Like, Mr. Yi didn't give a single instruction because Ryman are meant to learn from their own and play with their hearts, but again, he'll be back. <laughs> Favourite match, I would say, is the Alia Academy one. It's the one I was looking forward to and it did not disappoint at all. But I want to give an extra mention to the match that did not contain Ryman whatsoever. Polestar versus Kirkwood. That was a real highlight of the season and I wish Inazuma got the chance to do that more often. Matches not featuring Ryman where you can't tell who's going to win. Yes, please. Favourite of the new moves. Um, the Detonator is certainly up there. The Explosion! and Cosmic Blaster, the two-person version, well up there. Fire Lemonade, genuinely in with a shout. Um, I think Fancy Footwork, though, is honestly my number one choice. Um, sorry, I don't think I could narrow down a favourite episode or anything, but one final mention, just to the art style and the animation, it's so radically improved from Inazuma of, of seasons past, which was never bad, but I can look at individual screenshots from this show and just not leave them for ages. It really does look splendid. It's so 2018 onwards and I just want to give a big thanks to everyone who put the season together. I'm not sure any of them would be watching this but this really was good and I don't think Ares is going to be anyone's favourite season necessarily. It's it's the shortest season in Inazuma history tied with the original season. It's not meant to excel in any particular area. It is a return to basics but I'd say it's at least in the middle for me. It achieves everything it set out to do and just did it really, really well. It's got problems. No season doesn't have problems, but it's one that gets not enough credit for me. I have, I see a lot of people um, just either skimming over Ares or casually saying it was bad or it was good, but that was it. But I think they really, within 26 episodes and a recycled format, you could say, they truly made this stand out. So I have thoroughly enjoyed going through every single episode one by one, giving my thoughts. Please let me know down below what you thought of Ares as a whole and the Lunar Prime match. Favourite moves, favourite characters, anything. I love to hear it. But I will see you in another video, whatever that may be. It's been Taylor the Toaster. Thank you, Inazuma11. Let's play football. There we go. I did the thing. <laughs>